Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day again everyone. Today we will be learning the last way in our class of how to find the slope of a line. So before we actually go into the uh, slope of the line um, method, the last method, okay, let's uh, have first, uh, let's us um, have ourselves be familiarized with the um, form of the equation of the line which is called the slope intercept form so again this form is called the slope so if you can write that properly the slope intercept form or as i would like to call it yung sip kasi be familiar um be sure that you know the you know, the shortcuts the abbreviation for you know, for the different kinds of equation of a line okay so this is the very first one that we would be discussing known as the SIP or the slope intercept form. Now the slope intercept form would have the following parts. Okay? It would have this M. Let me just change the color. It would have this M and then it would have this D. Okay? M would be your slope. This is your slope. Okay? So immediately, um, if you would look at the given, immediately beside X, that would be the slope. Whatever number is beside x, that would be the slope. And the next one, the b, that would be your, let me try it wrong. That would be your y-intercept. Okay? So this would be your y-intercept. And basically, when we talk about intercept, it's just, it is the point in the y-axis that the line intersects. Okay? So for example, this is our, sorry, mm -hmm. Okay, this is our given, okay? So, say we have a certain specific line, the y-intercept would be the point in the y-axis that the line intersects with. So, for example, this would be, say, um, 1, 2. So, your b is equals to 2. Kasi at point 2 in the y-axis, the line is intersected by the line. Okay? So, that is basically the b or the y-intercept. So, let me delete that. So this is the main component of the SIP, the slope intercept form, and it's one of the easiest, no, it is the easiest way to find the equation of the line, having the slope and having the y-intercept. So why are we discussing this one? Because the um, one way of finding the slope of a line is by manipulating our, by manipulating our equation, equation of the line, in the form, just to, be, you know, to remind you of, ax plus by is equal to c. So, this is the general form of the equation of the line. Okay, this is the general form. ax plus by is equal to c. Or in some cases, c would be beside. But in any case, um, ayan, this would be the look of the general form. Now, what we need to do here is we need to make, is we need to make this equation look like this equation so that we can easily identify what is the slope okay so um, let's have examples so that we can uh, find the equation uh, the slope of the line and we can apply immediately our uh, our third method and this third method is just simply manipulation po so that's why we separated this one because this would take a little bit longer let's say we would go back to a lot of Algebra, algebraic um, manipulations, the topics, okay, transposition, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's have say our equation of the line is 8x plus 3y is equals to negative 9. Okay, our main point and our main goal for us to find the slope of a line using the SIP is transposing. Let me write that down. Main goal is to transpose all values to the other side leaving only y. Lipat natin daw lahat. We will transpose everything on the other side leaving only the value of I I mean the variable y. Okay, so meaning in this given, we will transpose 8x, we will transpose this times 3, everything to the other side, leaving only y. Okay, 
Okay? So, we go back to our um, ruling when it comes to transposition. So, first things first. When you are having um, transposition and you are a little bit confused, because you might ask, sir, which one do I transpose first? This 3 here or the 8x? Okay? When it comes to transposition, the very first thing you need to transpose is addition and subtraction if and only if there is no other multiplication or division okay, that, is, um, that is over the entire equation. What do you mean over? For example, this one. Everything is divided by 2. Everything is divided by 2. Okay? So there's no general division or multiplication operation like this one. Everything is multiplied by 2. Long as there is no case like that, you can transpose addition and subtraction immediately. Okay? So in this case, there's no nothing like that. Let's transpose first the addition and subtraction. And which one? Because you might ask, sir, this is the only addition here. But remember, guys, you can actually interchange their position. It would become 3y plus 8x. So meaning, I can transpose this plus 8x. Okay? So basically, uh, what I need to transpose first is this 8x. So transposing 8x to the other side, the sign of 8x is um, positive. So it would become negative 9 minus 8x. Okay? Negative 9 minus 8x. And what's the next thing you need to do? We need to transpose this 3. Since this 3 is multiplication, okay, it's multiplied to y. When we transpose, it becomes division. And take a note, guys. When you are dividing this by 3, you divide everything by 3. Okay? So if I would transpose this 3, it would become division. Division. Y is equals to negative 9 divided by 3 minus 8x divided by 3. So that's the rule, guys. When you are transposing division, you divide every given on the other side. The same goes for multiplication, actually. When you transpose multiplication, you multiply everything on the other side. This is the case. Okay? Negative 9 divided by 3, the answer is negative 3 minus 8 thirds x. So what happened here? Since it, the given is 8x over 3, okay, so I can just simply um, remove x or remove x to the side and make my 8 over 3 my numerical coefficient. Okay, so basically it's just like this naman eh. So this would be 8 over 3 times x over 1. And it would be the same as this one. Okay? So, yeah. so just simply move the numerator and denominator on the side and make sure that the x is on the middle here, giving us this equation. And of course, what we need to do is we need it to look like y is equal to mx plus b, meaning the x should be first. y is equal to negative 8 over 3x minus 3. Like that me. Change that a little bit. Negative 8 over 3x minus 3. Okay? So, having this, take a look at the given. Sabi natin, it's y is equal to mx plus b. The slope is always beside x. And what is beside x? It's just simply negative 8 over 3. Therefore, we can assume that m is equal to negative 8 over 3. Okay? So, that is purely manipulation. So, again, the first thing that we did is we transposed. The next thing we did is we rearranged. And the last thing is we identify the slope. By looking at the number or number part or the numerical coefficient of our value or of our variable x. Okay? So, let's have another example. Say our given is like this. y is equal to negative 5 over 2x. Minus 5. Okay, in this case, what do you think is the slope? Since you, you, it's very obvious that it is already in the form of y is equals to mx plus b. Okay, y is alone already. Then therefore, we can assume that anything beside x, that would be your slope. So since this one is already in the SIP form, we can therefore assume that m is equals to negative 5 over 2. And this is your slope. Okay. 
So there are cases that you will be receiving a given that is already in the SIP form, slope intercept form. SIF pala, SIF, okay? So next one, another example that will involve transposition. Say we have 4x minus 3y is equals to 9, okay? So let's have this one. Again, everything beside x, I, beside y, I mean, will be transposed to the other side. So giving us negative 3y, 9 minus 4x, right? So we transpose this positive 4x, it becomes negative. Next, we transpose negative 3 as a whole, okay? Y should be positive. Kasi if you would notice in our equation, it's not negative y is equal to mx plus b. It's positive y, okay? So it must be always positive y, therefore the 3 will take the negative with it. Divide everything by negative 3, giving us y is equals to 9 divided by negative 3 minus 4x divided by negative 3. Next one, Eva oops, sorry. evaluating the given further, 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3, and negative 4 over negative 3x yung magiging um, numerical coefficient of the x. And since um, you will notice that it's double negative, remember the rule of double negative. That when you have two negatives, it will be cancelled out, leaving us... So I'm just going to put it in the middle. Ah. Kasi if the negatives in the denominator and no negative on the numerator, anyone can have the negative. So I'm going to put it here in the middle. Kasi both of them can have it. Okay? Double negative, it becomes positive. And lastly, we rearrange our given. Rearrange our given as y is equal to 4 thirds x minus 3. Therefore, our m is equal to 4 thirds. Okay? So, it's very easy to solve for the slope if you just follow these this steps. Okay? And the thing about this one is, uh, no, there are steps that you can already to call this. You can already skip. I'm just writing it down so that it's, it's um, you can see the flow of the changes. Okay? But in any case, let's try to make it as simple as possible and as short as possible. Let's have our last example as for a while. So let's have okay, let's have this one. Negative 2y minus 10 plus 2x is equal to 0. So, ano, what is our rule again? We need to transpose everything except for y on the other side. So, we need to transpose negative 10, it becomes positive, and, negative, uh, and positive 2x, it becomes negative. Leaving us with 2y here, divide both sides by 2y. Okay, y would be 10 divided by negative 2, the answer is negative 5. Negative 2x divided by negative 2, the answer is positive x. y is equal to x minus 5, leaving us with our slope of, therefore our slope is simply 1. Bakit 1? Kasi you will notice here, yan, our x has nothing beside it and what is beside um, any variable if there is no numerical coefficient is always 1. So, therefore, giving us a slope of 1. Take a note, guys, that the slope can either be a positive or negative number, a whole number, or a fraction. In this case, our slope is a whole number, positive. In this case, our slope is a positive again, but it's a fraction. Sorry. This one, in this case, it's a negative and a fraction. Okay. And same goes for this one. It's a negative and a fraction. So the slope can range from any value, may it be positive or negative, fraction or whole number, okay? And of course, there are cases that we will have a slope of 0 and undefined, which is uh, definitely ve uh, no, very much allowed, okay? So in this case, uh, let's just show what are the example of equations that will always give you a, um, a 0 as your slope, okay? So, for example, y is equals to 7. This one would give you a slope of a 0, 
Okay, a slope of 0. Why? Because you can actually add 0x here. And why is it okay to add 0x? As a 0 times x would be 0. It's just like adding nothing to something. It will not change anything. For example, um, say I have 6. I added 0 to 6. It's still 6. It's the same. So adding 0x, because that is basically 0, this one, it will change nothing. So therefore, it would still be y is equal to 7, having, having just this 0x. And definitely, this is under the form of this is under the form of the slope intercept form with your m as your 0. Uh, with the 0 as your m, therefore, this one is a wait lang, this one is a horizontal line. Okay? Now, as for you know, any given that will be, that will have a slope of 0, it would be like this. 7y is equals to 2. Yan. Still, the slope here is 0. Okay? So, basically, if you don't have any x, then, therefore, your um, given would have a slope of 0. Okay? Now, how about if your slope would be undefined? Remember that in undefined, um, you must have um, you must have a slope of um, division of 0. You are dividing by 0. Kasi that is the value of undefined. You cannot divide by 0. So, those givens are actually like this. Wait lang, may ano ba? Seven, oh, sorry, sorry. 0 is equals to 2x plus 5. So, 0, this could either be 0, y, right? But then again, you cannot have this, right? You cannot have this 0 here. So, you will transpose it on the other side. So, basically, it's just like having y is equals to 2x divided by 0 plus 5 over 0. And remember, you cannot divide by 0, right? So, therefore, any given, so we can assume that any given that will only have the x value, okay, or x variable, that would give you, okay, that would give you a slope of undefined. So, the basic structure of any slope of undefined would be having only variables for x. For example, x equals to 2. x is equals to 2 fifths. Okay? 2x is equals to 5. And so on. Okay? If your variable is only x, it is undefined. But if your variable is only y, it is 0. Okay? So that would be for the slope intercept form or finding the slope using the SIF. Um, if you have any other questions, you can chat me in our chat box or you can go uh, you can go over the video again okay so thank you everyone for listening and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh